Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today up at the James Julia Auction House in Maine, taking a look at some of the interesting and unusual firearms that they're going to be selling in their upcoming April-Spring of 2017 firearms auction. What we are looking at today, right here, is a 22 caliber Noble automatic pistol. And that's Noble spelled with a K. Uh, Mr. W. B. Noble of Tacoma, Washington designed and built this pistol, although he's better known for having built a 45 caliber pistol of a totally different mechanism but the same basic styling, which he entered into the US 1907 pistol trials. Unfortunately for him, it wasn't that good of a pistol. Uh, in fact, it was assessed by Springfield Armory, or uh, the Ordnance Department, um, specifically a Springfield Armory employee at those 1907 trials, and deemed very crude and not worth shooting. So they never even got fired in trials before it was dropped from competition. Now Noble had a couple other guns that he built. We previously took a look at a Noble automatic pistol in 30 Luger caliber, and now we have one in 22 rimfire. I don't have any specific information on when he built this. Um, I don't know if this came before or after the 45 caliber version, but a guy like Noble is noteworthy for his inclusion in those pistol trials, and so I like to take a look at every one of his guns I can when I get the chance. Well, this is very much a prototype gun. Um, it does appear to be functional. Um, the trigger is a little bit finicky, but everything appears to work. The manufacturing is a bit crude. Um, it's really what jumped out at me first was actually this grip shape and this cutout in the, the handle in the magazine well. I honestly have no idea why Noble did this, but he did it on every single pistol that I've seen of his. Doesn't really seem to do anything. It does, I suppose it tells you if there's a magazine in there, but you can kind of know that by looking at the base as well. Who knows? He also really liked to have the base of the magazine contoured to fit the bottom of a curved grip like this. Here's his 45 caliber US Army Trials gun, and you can see the, uh, the similarities there. Uh, magazine release on both guns is at the back of the heel, and there you go. Got that big open cutout in the front of the magazine well. No idea why. The magazines are also pretty similar here. This is of course the 45 caliber one, and this is the 22. One would normally expect to have a, uh, a spring in there, and interestingly, a neat little feature, Noble did obviously put a spring in the magazine, but it's a small diameter spring, and it's running right in the front of the magazine. Now I suspect that this has been rolled over just slightly to keep the magazine in place, because it doesn't kink up or try to jump out of that track when you run the follower down. So that's neat. Um, this magazine, by the way, is extremely tight in the gun, um, as has been the case with some, but actually like all of the Noble pistols I've seen. Even that 45 is a pretty tight fit for the magazine. Now the 30 Luger and 45 ACP Nobles were both toggle-locked guns, short recoil toggle-locked. This is just a simple blowback. Of course this is a rimfire 22 caliber pistol, so you cock the hammer, and then you have this slide which just reciprocates backward with enough weight to keep the bolt closed while you're firing. Presumably there would have been some type of sight eventually added here. As it is, there's just a front sight. No finish on the gun, although there is this nice patterning on the receiver itself. And the only markings on here are actually Colt markings. Now that's not because Colt had anything to do with the production of this gun, it's because he took Noble took a 22 caliber Colt pistol and used its barrel to manufacture this gun. Uh, obviously it's, that, that's one of the most complicated parts to make, a rifled barrel. So if you can take an existing one and just retrofit it to your use, so much the better. You'll note that there is no trigger guard. Uh, that was also the case on the 30 caliber Nobles. Uh, why he didn't like the trigger guide, I don't know. But he, I guess, really didn't. So. That, of course, fires the gun, and the linkage uh, for the trigger and hammer is here external on the gun. That's one of those things that's not that uncommon to find on prototypes that would have been uh, covered over in the, the production version of the gun had it ever gotten to that point. So you can see that that resets itself and it's locked in place there when the hammer's cocked. And then, 
There we go. When I drop the hammer, this becomes loose. Noble automatic pistols are very few and far between. As far as I know, not a single one of his designs ever went into any sort of production, and most of them are one-off, basically tool room prototypes like this one. So it's always a unique opportunity to take a look at one, and they're always very distinctive. That, that grip and magazine style just carries through to every single pistol he made, it seems. If you'd like to add this one to your own collection, perhaps you have a collection of Noble Automatic Pistols, or perhaps you'd just like to start one, well, it is coming up for auction here at Julia. So if you take a look at the description text below the video, you'll find a link there to Julia's catalog page on this, where you can see their pictures and description, place a bid online through the website, or come up here to Fairfield, Maine, and participate live yourself. Thanks for watching.